Thank you to Kaski Nation for the invitation, giving me uh, the possibility to talk about a very important aspect in navigation systems overall, and it's the econo economic value. So my aim of my talk is to give you some ideas of why this is important and why we should worry about economic aspects when performing ablations, and then giving you a few examples on how we managed to finally get our hands on the system and um, to convince our financial department and the leaders of our hospital that this system is important to us and uh, maybe that can help you in your future efforts if you want to do stereotactic ablations. So to start off, um, let me tell you a little bit about my hospital and where I work and about my working environment. Um, the University Hospital of Ringsburg is a transplant center as well as Cambridge and Danderyd, I guess, as well. No, not no transplant center, but we have large departments for abdominal surgery and gastrointestinal medicine, so we get a lot of our referrals from in-house and not as many from different uh, centers in Germany. And we see many patients with hepatic diseases and along that many liver tumors. We started our first tumor ablations percutaneously with CT guidance in 2011. We did ultrasound before that and I actually dug in to our archives to find um, pictures from that case, obviously RFA back then. Since then we switched to microwave. A lot has happened. Um, we did our first interventions with Cascination actually in 2013, I found out, but we use it more and more regularly. And since 2017, we perform all our hepatic ablations using CAS1. And right now, we perform around 100 um, ablations or 100 patient sessions with about 150 lesions treated each year. And we kept our numbers quite constant over the last five years. So the development curve where you um, get more and more ablations, that's already behind us. And we, are, we were actually to be happy during the pandemic, we were quite happy to keep our numbers more or less constant because we had big trouble in the hospitals providing the anesthesia slots for the procedures as well. So we were not, uh, not only the surgeons did suffer, we did suffer as well. So we were quite happy with our constant numbers. So to understand why you should worry about um, the economic value, you have to understand what is important to who. So of course, for um, the patient's outcome is the only thing that matters. And for clinicians, to be honest, almost the same goes. And that's a good thing, and that's right. We should worry about outcome before we worry about um, economic value. But somebody has to pay the bill. And so the hospitals and the health insurance companies, they have to look at the economic factors. And so it's not because we are money grabbing or, or we are just greedy. It's just a necessity we need to adapt to. And we have new challenges in our healthcare systems in Germany as I guess in most other countries as well. So we have to worry about that. And we have to justify why we do our things and we have to be as efficient as possible. So I think um, Marie and um, Naida already provided us with a lot of information why we should perform um, stereotactic ablations. There are benefits over surgery in certain scenarios and there are certainly benefits over conventional ablation. But um, quality ablation or stereotactic navigation is more expensive than performing conventional ablation. So there is a reimbursement gap in using that. And there's one big problem in healthcare economics, at least in Germany. Trying out new technologies or innovative new systems is quite easy. So you can you get your hands on them. But um, transferring that into your daily clinical practice is, an, uh, is a whole other task. Because you have to prove first that you have clinical value and economical value, and then after that, you maybe get a decent reimbursement, and that might follow, but it's an untrue thing, and that puts you at the risk to just starve to death because you don't get any money paid for your procedure, so at some point, you might just have to stop doing that. And so the challenge is the reimbursement gap, and to cover that for the years until you get decent reimbursement for your procedure. So, but with that problem, we are not alone. If you look at other innovative systems like Da Vinci for urosurgical procedures or Matrix for spinal surgery procedures, they are very innovative, have good clinical value, as does CAS1 IR. But if you look at the weight average cost per case, they are massive for those other systems as well. 
So CAS1 isn't this expensive if you compare it to other systems on the market. And for all those systems, you don't really get reimbursement specific-wise. So the solution to that is to perform cost-benefit analysis of your cases. Because um, the cost of your systems, it's quite obvious and it's quite easy to comprehend. You have the cost for the system itself, which you can maybe split over a few years of time span. Then you have the yearly cost for consumables and for service. So it's quite easy to understand how much the system is going to cost your hospital if you apply it to your daily practice. But the benefits are not really obvious since you don't get specific reimbursement for using the system. So when performing a cost-benefit analysis, um, we did that retrospectively with Cascination, with the help of Stefan Ebischer, for example, and he was very helpful. And um, Cascination worked with a number of hospitals during the recent years to perform cost-benefit analyses, and they identified a number of points that, and, um, that offer potential benefits, either to uh, increasing your revenue or to save costs. But this is very hospital specific and it depends on in which hospital you work, the size of the hospital, and of course your healthcare system. So arguments that might be very important for um, our hospital in Germany, which is a university hospital, might be as important as a for a private hospital in Germany and might be not important for a hospital in Switzerland or Croatia. So we have to look at those points with your team and identify the points that might be of interest for your healthcare setting. And I'm just going to put you through um, with what we did with our cases really quick and um, maybe give you an idea of to what conclusion we came. It was positive. So we identified that um, additional ablation treatments might be of benefit. Ad additional surgical treatments with bridging patients until they can be transplantable or resectable with tumors and additional capacities as well as reduction of complications and time savings for the leading radiologist. This one had a little bit of an overlap with the last point of the revenue increases. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So if you look at our ablation numbers, it's quite hard we, because we have been doing ablations for quite some time and we have been using other navigation systems in the past. But if you look at the period where we just got started, it was when we did freehand ablations or ultrasound guided ablations before 2016, our numbers increased during that time. And we were all, um, also quite early adapters for doing IRE as a non-thermic ablation technique, but we did a few back then. And now our numbers have increased a little bit. We still do a majority of our cases using microwave ablation, and I think thermic ablation is always going to be the backbone of any interventional oncology department. But uh, we're getting our numbers up for um, liver IRE, and in recent years also for ECT of liver, which I think is just getting started in Percutaneous ablation. It's very promising in my opinion. And um, that's where we are now. And um, we keep in mind for the near future that we want to expand. We want to ablate more lesions if we get the resources for that. Because, well, right now, I think this case is very similar to what Marie just showed us. It's right on the liver dome. Um, if you want to ablate this tumor using um, ultrasound, it's going to be challenging at least. But with um, cascination, this more or less becomes a standard procedure. And this um, certain case, the intervention time from start to finish was 40 minutes, and anesthesia time a little bit more than one hour, one hour and two minutes to be exact. So this is going to be routine and allows you, if once you have streamlined your process and everybody is used to working with the system, this allows for more ablations. And you can treat patients that maybe wouldn't have been treatable a few years back. This is one um, ECT case, which I like to show on Congresses, which was very nice. A big metastasis right on the liver dome. Patient was not resectable. And uh, we did ECT on that case with a very nice result. Um, as you can see in the down right corner, after six months, we had complete tumor necrosis, just leaving behind a little scar. And right now, after two years, this patient is still tumor free. So it enables you to treat new lesions that wouldn't have been treatable before. And if you look at the numbers in Germany, uh, you might see here, I just want to um, shorten, shortcut this a little bit, um, that with microwave ablation, we don't earn as much money. But in Germany, when performing IRE and ECT, this comes, becomes very profitable. And why is this the case? Um, to understand this, you have to go to the German DIG system 
to really understand how we get immersed. So we always have a combination of ICD codes that we code for every single diagnosis and procedure codes. And if you put those combinations of um, procedures and diagnosis together, you trigger a certain di uh, diagnosis-related group, and this determines how you get reimbursed for each case. And MVA and RFA of liver tumors trigger a different code than um, does IRE and ECT, for example. And with that, the reimbursement per case is around 3,600 for um, microwave and more than the double for IRE. So this is why those procedures especially are very profitable in Germany. And if you get enabled to do them in larger numbers or on lesions that wouldn't have been treated before, that's a big plus. So, um, additional surgical treatments. This is a hard one. Um, I talked to the guy who, um, who focuses on reimbursement um, in the surgical department and asked him frankly, and he said, well, I don't really know. Because it's very intransparent for um, surgeons to, um, to get the profit out of the case or to know how much they earned with the case. The reimbursement is quite clear, but they have many cost factors like hospital stay, and medications, periprocedural, that vary a lot. So these numbers have to be um, considered with, with caution. But he said that's the right hallmark of profits that they do earn with the treatments. And without CAS1 IR, uh, we wouldn't have this much cases, or this many cases, where we would be able to bridge a patient to transplantability or to debulk him as much, or to allow for hemihepatectomy, and then treat the rest of the lesions that are remaining in the other lobe. And with that, you still, even if it's a few patients, you still make quite a profit that you can, can relate to caskination. And um, additional capacities and saving time. CAS1 leads to shorter and more standardized treatment times, as I already mentioned, and as Marie mentioned. So if you do complex ablations, that almost one uh, hour per case. If you think that we did about 20 cases with complex ablations for these years, that equals around 20 hours of time savings for me. So I don't have to be there, I can do something else. So what should I do with all that time? I could just sneak off, have a few um, Bahama Mamas or something like that, or squeeze in a quick round of golf, but I could also work. So then um, the worst case scenario for me, and um, I think also the patient would be me reporting on CTs, because I don't like to do that. But I'd bring in my sheer workforce, and I generate a little bit of profit. Well, better would be if I perform tips during that time, help my colleagues, and then we would earn a little bit more money. And still, if I use my time that I save during the interventions wisely, we could generate more profit for the hospital. And we cause less complications, as, my, uh, as we heard in the previous talks. And this is quite relevant. Uh, we actually had contact to Stuttgart. They uh, went through this whole process a little bit before us, and we talked to them. And they uh, took the pain of analyzing the costs that are produced by complications quite transparently. And they thought minor complications result in costs of about 1,000 euros, and major complications about 6,000 euros. So if you save, um, uh, if you produce less complications, you actually save a lot of money for the hospital, and this is quite relevant. So if you conclude that and put that all together, you see that also in 2021, the benefits that we gathered already outweighed the costs. So we had a positive feedback on that. And for the near future, if we want to talk to our um, financial decision makers in the hospital, and we want to tell them where we are going, we want more resources, we want to do more, we can say if we can stick to that plan, we can generate even more profit for the hospital. So this might be a good argument if you want to get more resources for your ablations. And what I just want to cover really briefly are the economic values at society level. So there's a few of them we already heard about. So we have higher quality of life with same overall survival, reduced radiation exposure, which might save um, the whole system, healthcare system money, reduced complication rates, less recurrences, all that are very positive factors that you can relate to cascination. You get more efficient treatment, and also physicians and technicians save themselves radiation exposure. We're increasing our training standards when using cascination, 
and we get a reputation for clinical excellence um, because it's still very innovative and new, and it's always good to wheel that off when you, um, or wheel that around, that you do stereotactic navigation when you talk to external um, healthcare professionals, and it's always a good thing. So, to conclude, CAS1 IR leads to clinical benefits. Uh, I think we all know that by now. And though it is not reimbursed, and that's the same problem with many other systems, we do certainly be able to create economic value for our hospital, but also at a society level. And that's it. Thank you very much.